really helps this big turbo. Are you looking for performance parts for your first generation or second generation cruise? Check out supercruises.com today so you can order your parts directly from me. Hey everyone, we're just jumping into this video. All I want to do today is show you basically how I have everything at this point. We're going to take the car for a drive so we can see the methanol working and then eventually I want to get it to the dyno. Okay, so off camera I decided to just finish up some things so the temperature probes are set up. Uh, the wiring is sent to uh, both of the probes, one in the intercooler, one in the intercooler pipe. I have the wire for the shift light just sitting here because I haven't quite figured out how I want to wire it into the coil. I'm going to do a whole video on the shift light. Inside the car, you can see that we have this cluster right here. This is how everything is going to stay. Uh, the temperature gauges are reading. Basically, I say gauges because in here there's actually two needles, a green one and a red one. One is reading the uh, intercooler's temperature, the other one is reading the intercooler pipe's temperature at the engine. So this is the intake temperature in the engine. Uh, that red light pretty much means we're low on methanol. I'm going to fill up the methanol before we go for a spin. I wanted to show you where I put the controller. I temporarily put the controller right here just for now. And the programmer for the methanol injection is actually under here. So what I'll be able to do is adjust my turn in and ramp in. Uh, I need to do that on the fly for the first run and then once I adjust those, everything else will be done through this controller. Uh, I decided to put everything in the transmission tunnel because I figured that was a good area for this stuff to be hidden. Once the wires are, basically there's a, this bracket's in the way, we can just take these two bolts off and get all the wires into the transmission tunnel and then that can be hidden inside the panel and all you're going to need for your methanol is uh, this little controller. What I'm doing right now is I decided to do a test in the garage. Before I take this car out for a spin and actually show you the, the driving impressions, I wanted to let the car get warm. So I let the car idle for a little bit. I let some heat get into the intercooler and the intake manifold so I could show the gauges basically both temperatures. I wanted to show a difference in temperature. Then what I decided to do is keep the engine at a high RPM and fluctuate the methanol injection. I didn't want to keep holding the button, which would cool down and take temperatures much faster. I wanted to fluctuate it to give the engine a chance to actually use the fuel that I'm dumping down its throat. And you could actually watch the needle move. And this is a good indication of what methanol injection actually can do for an engine. It helps with cooling properties, it helps with knock, it helps with air fuel ratio, it actually cleans the inside of the engine, and I wanted to show you guys basically in a visual way how it works. Now if you look, the green temperature actually dropped. So it was about, I wanna say 90 degrees. After running methanol, it started dropping and it's getting closer to 70. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drive. We're gonna see these lights turn on and it's gonna ramp in the methanol. It's gonna be pretty, I'm doing it you know, at a low boost just cause I wanna see the methanol kick in so I can show you guys how it works. Considering this car always ran lean, now it's running at a pretty good air fuel ratio. I'm watching the temperatures drop now on the gauge. And the temperatures are now going down. I'm actually getting them closer to what it does at the intercooler now. feels great with the methanol. Wow, this car moves. Okay, so I wanted to add a portion into this video where I could show you how the methanol injection can actually change your air fuel ratio. What I want to do is I have the methanol injection off right now. 
the methanol injection is off so i'm just driving around normal it's 75 degrees out my intake temperatures are about 85 degrees at the uh, intake manifold and they're about 69 degrees at my intercooler so we're running pretty good today even with the methanol injection off that's all intercooler intercooler temperatures aside i wanted to go over basically just air fuel ratio now methanol is off i want to go full throttle down this road and i want to show you what the air fuel ratio is this car's always pretty much been lean uh pretty much the whole time i've been modifying this car it's always been lean and pretty much anything over a 12 to 1 air fuel ratio to me i consider a lean condition this isn't about going fast, I just want to show you guys wide open throttle, what it does. So right now, wide open throttle, we're at a 13.2, 12.9, 12 12.7. That's the problem with uh, people not having like an air fuel ratio gauge in the car. I have a wide band and it's always showing me what's going on and I know this car's been running lean. So now what I'm gonna do, since we're on the same road, is I'm turning the methanol injection on. I'm gonna put it on full blast, basically the highest setting. I'm still on the same gear, and I'm gonna hit the gas, and I want you to see what the air-fuel ratio is now. Now the air-fuel ratio is actually getting lower. Oh, I'm running out of room. Now the air-fuel ratio is gonna start getting richer. Now we're at a 10.7 is the lowest I saw. It can definitely do better. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna adjust the air fuel ratio to basically what I want the air fuel ratio to be. Now I have a range to work with. Full blast is in the tens and when it's off, I'm in the basically high 12s, 13s. So now when I hit the gas, I'm hoping to see like in the 11s. Yeah. I can't even tell you how amazing this car is now. The methanol injection transformed the way this car was driving. It's helping the air fuel ratio. I think the number that I saw while I was driving, I was really paying attention to my uh, temperatures, but like a, a 10.6 or something. So it's definitely richer. Uh, before it kept running lean. Now we are closer to where we wanna be. I wanna probably adjust it maybe to keep it in the 11s. Uh, though I will say Jerry at Bad News Racing says like a 12 flat to one is the best air fuel ratio but I'm also running methanol, which helps avoid knock and actually helps the intake temperature. So I'm gonna keep it a little richer. That's just my two cents. I don't know where you should be really based between him and I, but I'm happy with that air fuel ratio. The intake temperatures uh, are, you can see the methanol works. That's why I do this testing. That's why I show everybody. So basically the intake temperature, where I have my probe is right above the throttle body, okay? The heat from the intake manifold is basically going to be soaked into your throttle body. It's going to be soaked into your intercooler pipe. When you get close to the engine, you're going to get the engine's temperature into your intercooler pipe and into your intake. So your intake manifold is going to be 180 degrees because the engine itself is 180 degrees. The methanol, uh, which we see drops temperatures, goes inside the intake manifold, helps cool everything down, gets into the cylinders, helps cool the cylinders down. Also, you can adjust your air fuel ratio. So not only does it help with cooling, it could also help with knock and the methanol increases horsepower. I actually felt a massive difference. The car was making power, but it was not happy. Every time I wanted to take this thing out to the dyno or basically just take it out for drives, I kept feeling like something was wrong. Today after driving it and doing a nice long run, getting this thing up to speed and watching the methanol work and getting the temperatures to drop, Oh my God, is this car amazing now? I, I, it feels to me the same as like my GTO, right? My GTO doesn't have a lot of modifications. It is a, from the factory, 400 horsepower car, but it's very heavy. This is a much lighter car. And I feel like I have to be over 300 horsepower. You figure this thing's like 800 pounds lighter and it has like 300 horsepower. And 
they almost feel the same to me. Maybe not from the dig, maybe from zero to a hundred miles an hour, the GTO is going to win. But if I'm going like 30 miles an hour and I mash the gas, this thing pins me in my seat and, and it feels like it has a V8 under the hood. That And that's what's amazing. It feels great to me. I, I really wish the car came from the factory this way. I'm almost building the SS version of the Chevy Cruze or, or what a real RS should have been. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. I know I have a giant grin on my face and I know I don't show emotion well, but I am the happiest I could ever be building this car. I have a few little things I need to do and I'm trying my hardest to get this car to a dyno tuner. So not, not to tune, but dyno tuners pretty much have a dyno and I wanna really see what kind of power this has now. Between the intercooler, the big turbo, the meth injection, the cold air intake, some of the tweaks I've done to the uh, diverter system, the, uh, you know, I, I, I have a preload on the wastegate that's my preload. And when I say my preload, if I put that preload on one of your turbos and might mess your car up, I'm I'm pushing this turbo and I'm doing it for a reason. I basically want this car to be a cheerleader for the cruise community. I want to get the power out. Not only that, it's also a factory exhaust system car. There are no illegal modifications done to this car. I did not touch the emission system. I have the factory exhaust. I mean, you can hear how quiet the car is in the videos. I'm doing this legal and I'm doing it in a way that's helping people get power out of a car and not get in trouble, especially if you're in California. Uh, you know, states like California, they're really cracking down on people who uh, modify cars. If you do it a certain way, it could potentially be legal and you can gain horsepower without having a problem. I'm enjoying doing this for everybody. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this too. And I'm happy to bring these videos to you because I know a lot of people in the cruise community are appreciative and you guys are happy somebody's doing this, at least with the Generation 2 cruise. Uh, Stay tuned. I don't know if you can see behind me, but we also have Black Widow. I have some stuff coming for that car. And uh, I have some more stuff coming for this car. And I might have more content up until me getting the car out on the dyno. I have some other stuff I filmed for this car that I'm going to put on the channel. What I'm trying to say is keep in touch. Hopefully you guys are enjoying everything. If you guys need anything, feel free to ask and have a very nice day. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go.